name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The epistle begins, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that it may be saved. I bear them witness. They have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. Um, Israel, when it's used in the New Testament, refers to the people of God. Actually, throughout all the scripture. The people of God, his chosen people. The verse, just because it's in the news all the time, I thought I'd make a note of this. The verse is not referring to the country of Israel, founded May 14th, 1948. This is written before that. Um, from a New Testament perspective, the followers of Christ, the church, is seen as the new Israel, the true Israel. So you have the people of God called Israel in the Old Testament, wandering around in the wilderness and all kinds of things. And now when we have it in the New Testament, when St. Paul is saying, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, referring to the people of God, the new Israel, true Israel, I bear witness they have a zeal for God, but it's not enlightened. So we have lots of verses in the New Testament for this, and I won't belabor the point, but just a couple of short ones. Peace and mercy be upon you who walk by this rule upon the Israel of God. This is St. Paul writing Galatians. And then St. Peter, but you are a chosen people. You're chosen. You're, you're the new Israel. So we're a chosen people. God has chosen us, but sometimes we aren't enlightened. Mostly because of our own sin. We don't feel connection to God. Connection to the Father. We don't, you know, I mean, how often have, uh, have we felt this way? And all of us confess, you know, I'm not really doing my prayer like I want to. Or I haven't really kept the fast like the church says. I'm not really reading scripture. I'm not really doing all of these things. And oh, I also want to say I, I don't feel very close to God. When the confessor hears it. I mean, I say these things too, but when the confessor hears it, confess, see, what am I? Confessor. When the confessor hears it, I, I can make that connection. You know, I can make that connection. I don't feel very close to God. Also, I'm not doing some of these things that would help. You know? So put another way, I feel the zeal for God. I want God. I want to feel close to God, but my heart is cold. Like, it just doesn't seem fired up to do this. It's hard. It's hard to pray. It's hard to fast. You know, it's hard. Our heart's, like, not fired up. In Orthodox theology, the spiritual life is often described in a three-stage framework, an outline of our journey towards holiness. The three stages are typically categorized as purification, illumination, and deification. Purification, that initial stage, is the stage where we focus on repentance and the cleansing of our sins. It involves recognizing and renouncing sinful behaviors and striving to live as God would have us, keeping his commandments. The process of purification, this first stage, aims at cleansing the heart and mind and making them receptive to divine grace. Practices like confession, fasting, and prayer. Almsgiving. You know, we grow in self-awareness and humility. Purification. Illumination. After the soul's been purified, it enters into a state of illumination. We begin to experience the deeper understanding, the real like, feeling even of closeness to God and His truth. This is marked by the stage, it's marked by an increased awareness of divine realities. We start to have the deeper meaning of Scripture. We start to see things. It's a transformation. The last stage, theosis or deification, this final stage is the ultimate goal of the Christian life, where we're united with God. It's not about becoming divine in our essence, but we participate in God's divine essence, His energy. We participate in His energy. The stage represents the culmination of the spiritual journey. Now, these stages are interrelated. Interrelated. It's ongoing life of the Christian. Purification prepares for the soul for illumination. Illumination deepens the experience of deification. Together they guide the believer towards the transformation union with God. But we don't graduate from one stage like 8th grade graduation where we don't ever go back to 8th grade or 7th grade or 6th grade. 
So, you know, if you're not careful, you'll hear this like, well, I probably passed purification. I must be into illumination. Maybe even deification. You got to be really like the only way to do the spiritual life. I'm nothing. I'm trying to rely on God more. You cannot do it like, you know, I'm something. I have moved along the stages. I hope when you hear this, purification, illumination, deification, you're humble enough to say, I'm not sure I've totally started this. Or maybe I have started it, but I've got to really like hunker down and really do this first stage a little better. Because if you have in your mind, I'm like a holy elder, you know, I should give advice to everyone. I should go online and tell everybody how to live the spiritual life. <laughs> we have to understand, we don't, we don't go from one stage to another. We might, you might have these, this experience of illumination where you feel closer to God, and you are. You know, you've been to confession. Anybody that's been to confession leaves feeling relieved. You've, you've kind of moved a little bit, right, in the spiritual life. It's like, ah, you know? But there's not this like, well, I don't need to confess anymore, you know? What do we have? All those stories of the Desert Fathers. They have like all these disciples. The elder is dying, and they're like, Father, what do you see? Tell us, what do you see? And he goes, I haven't begun to repent. And all of the disciples are like, if you haven't begun to repent, and they know him to be holy, like, we're in deep trouble. So what we want is to move towards becoming more like God. We want to understand the ways of this purification towards illumination. What did St. Paul say in the beginning of this? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they need to be they need to be saved. I bear witness. They have a zeal for God, but it's not enlightened. Enlightenment, illumination. They have the zeal, but they haven't gotten to the next thing. So I want to just make an, an analogy. I thought about, like, doing it, but I'll, I'll spare you that. Um, with the sensor, and describe it, use it to help describe our hearts... Um, this that we're not enlightened they're kind of cold it's harder to pray because our hearts haven't warmed up this thing by the way is thank you Andre for taking where are you Andre oh there you are yes of course sitting by pop I'm like you were right over here um, this thing was like wild um, and so just thinking of that or the sensor our hearts are sometimes like a charcoal right out of the box now you may not know what they look like but I'll not be show and tell but they're just around like round briquette and it comes out of the box with tons of potential. Like it's ready to go. And we don't have to pour like lighter fluid on it back there or anything. It's got, you know, it's ready to, to light up. But it's sitting there and in the box, there's nothing going on with this charcoal. They're, they won't, they won't spontaneously light. They're just there. Um, our hearts are sometimes like this. Tons of potential, but nothing's really happening. You know, you can hold them in your hand, they're cold. There's no spiritual energy, no fire, no warmth, and there's no fragrance of the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is what it's ultimately for. The charcoal is almost of no value. It is, really, of no value if it's not lit, if it's not been enlightened, if it's not been fired up. Our hearts are like this, not feeling close to God. We aren't sharing the love of God with others. We're judgy. We're disconnected from God sometimes. The charcoal in the censer is meant to be used to worship God. But without the fire of the Holy Spirit, it just sits in there. That's it. Nothing happens. There's no spark. We're made for relationship with God, illumination of the Holy Spirit. And just as every saint has. You know, we had the reading in Orthros today, and a bunch of you were here for the gospel reading this morning. I was out here holding the gospel book for a nice long time. The deacon came out, he's like, what, do I start? I'm like, yeah, keep going. Because normally I'm in before the deacon comes out. It's an, it's an Orthros thing, you should come see this. So the gospel reading today was about the two on the road to Emmaus. And most of you, I hope, know the story. But after Jesus died, was crucified, 
died. They buried Jesus. Three days later on the Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. The women go to the tomb early in the morning. They see that the tomb is open and he's not there. You know, an angel starts talking to them. You know, and Jesus actually shows up and tell, like, talks to him. So these two are on the road to Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. They're walking, and it says they're talking about all the things that had happened there in these days. And it said, and they walked, and they were sad. Because their Savior, the one who is, they knew him to be God. They knew he was God, had been killed. So they had nothing. So they're on a sad walk, seven miles. Seven miles is a long walk. They're putting in, it's like, it's a three hour, it's like a three hour walk. And um, it's hot there. So anyway, the gospel says Jesus came up and walked with them, but they didn't recognize him. And he says, what are you talking about as you walk on the road and are sad? And they, they say, are you the, are you like the only one that doesn't know this story? And they tell him about himself. <laughs> what had happened, how he'd been killed. You know, with a, like a fake trial and all this had gone on and they killed him. And they said he was the one we had like hoped, you know, the hope of Israel. And Jesus said, do you not like understand the scriptures? And it says he revealed to them the scriptures in all the places about himself. He just talked all through Isaiah. He talked about everything. And, and, and he said as they got to the end, he pretended to be going on. Like, well, I gotta go now. And they said, no, you gotta stay with us. Which is really, I mean, where was he going? He came for this meeting. He's just like, I'm gonna go. They're like, no, no, you need to stay. And they had bread, and Jesus, they sat down to eat, and Jesus blessed the bread. He broke it. And it says their eyes were open, and they saw it. And then the best line, it's like the best, I just loved it. Then he vanished out of their sight. It's gone. And then they have the line, which is the point of the story in regards to the sermon. They said, did not our hearts burn within us when he spoke to us on the road and revealed to us the scriptures? Their hearts were cold as they walked along and were sad. And then as Jesus revealed himself to them, their hearts were on fire. Their hearts were burning within us. The first stage for us is to humbly admit that we're not advanced. You need to admit you're not advanced. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, all of us, no matter who you are, need to admit you're not advanced. We need to do the work of purification on the path to this illumination and enlightenment. Towards a perfection. The first stage of the spiritual life, which is part of every stage, the acquisition of Holy Spirit. It's a gift we use or lose. It's like any physical gift or say like any, any like what we call, like, might call like a natural gift someone has. Or you could say it's like learning a language. If you've ever learned a foreign language, if you don't work at it, you lose it. And if you learn it and don't like and are basically like almost fluent and don't use it, you lose it. You can remember some vocabulary words like I came with Spanish from grade school. But I can't understand someone speaking in Spanish, nor can I speak in Spanish. But I'll randomly know, like, you know, see a bus and I know what it is in Spanish. I have all this, like, vocabulary locked in there, but I don't have the language because I don't use it. Spiritual life is like that. We're, we're doing it. We're learning and we're practicing the spiritual life. Like, you practice learning a new language. And as you practice, you become fluent in it. And you can, like, you understand and move within it. That's this spiritual life we're working on. That's why I, what is it, every sermon call you to confession? For 20 years? You know? It's like one sermon every, every Sunday for 20 years. Because it's this, it's this learning to practice the new language. Confession, fasting, prayer, tithing, you know, the almsgiving, growing in humility. So this week, we start a Lenten fast on Thursday for the Mother of God, the Dormition Fast. One of the best things you could do to warm your heart up in the spiritual life is to follow the fast for, for the Mother of God. And I'll say something about it during announcements. 
Right? She's, she's the, God, the mother of God, and she is like a mother to us. And uh, we, need to, we need to embrace the fact. We need to embrace being generous with our money. We need to pray, you know? And all of this, these things we want, we, it'll warm our hearts in the spiritual life. It's a spiritual work. We need to fight those bad thoughts. As we do all of this, it's like blowing on a charcoal briquette that's been lit. We had even a box of them that would explode when they got lit. They would like crack and pop out of there. I'm like, these are too fiery. You know, we got to like just the regular charcoal. But we light, we light it and the whole thing, it's just like any briquette you lit. The whole, you can see the fire pass over. And it goes from being cold and dark to being red hot. And then in a second's time, white hot. So very rarely, but it does happen, might even happen today, we'll be sensing and the charcoal will come out of the, the little holder, the sensor. And it's got to be picked up quickly because all this carpet's plastic, by the way, in case you're wondering. Because <laughs> it melts like a whole, so sometimes you, you visit altars and there's round shaped burnt holes, the charcoal got out of there and just And it's so hot, you have no choice but to quickly pick it up. You cannot pick it up without getting burned. There's, it's impossible, no matter how calloused or something your hands are. Once that heart is on fire, it goes from red hot to white hot. It's easy to pray, easier to pray. You know, the spiritual life doesn't feel like you're swimming in molasses or something, you know? It's just, I want to pray. I want to. I have the zeal, and it's in life. Like, the zeal is now going. It's focused. I can do it. The questions we've got, you know, about how do we start to feel closer to God, these are the answers to that. Purification, illumination, deification. But we have to be humble. Not imagine that we're down the road. Bishop Basil, when I was ordained, the retired bishop of Wichita, when I was ordained to the priesthood, he said that I need to keep, and I've mentioned this before, the lampada, the oil lamp, he goes, in your heart, that lampada in your heart, you've got to keep it lit. It's a great word. And one I've never forgotten. So if we want to feel close to God, and I know that you do, I want this for myself and for all of us. The first thing on the road to purification is to be humble. To be humble. And just to start. Not think you're advanced. Not make any excuses. Well, I've been Orthodox 30 years and I don't know how to do this. It's like, just be humble. I don't think anybody taught me. Or I wasn't paying attention. Teach me. You know, i got to learn. I want to confess. I want to acquire the Holy Spirit through prayer and fasting. Giving alms. May Christ, our true God, our hope, purify us and sanctify us. Lead us. He is good. Anything we're going through, he is good. He's the lover of mankind. And he wants this. St. Paul's, you know, big hope for the Romans. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they need to be saved. I bear witness they have a zeal for God. It's not enlightened. So let's pray for illumination. Let's pray for enlightenment. We're going to have a whole slew of people will baptize hopefully soon. And they'll, they'll kind of go right into illumination. And then we say, like, keep your baptismal garment undefiled. You know, keep it clean. You know, and it's a struggle. So for all of us strugglers, may God help us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.